book of Revelation, John looked and saw around God's throne, a numberless throne, and in their hands they held their crowns, and when their names were
welcome you. We're glad you're here. We appreciate each and every one of you being in the Lord's house tonight. And uh, we welcome our visitors. We pray the Lord will minister to you. Uh, we're coming this way to Mountain View Baptist Church. It's our youth choir. And speaking of youth, I would like to announce uh, at this moment that tomorrow morning, starting, I'm, I'm going to say 9 a.m., 9 a.m. each morning, Monday through Friday, we have school revival starting. And the guest preachers, Brother uh, Dr. Bill Dillon, the same individual that did a wonderful job at our this year's high school graduation right here in this sanctuary. So if you'd like to attend, you are more than welcome to come over, starting not at 8, but starting at 9 each morning. And they'll, they'll, they'll only go about an hour, 55 minutes or whatever. And so uh, that's the school revival going on this week. Keep that in mind, all right? And let's pray God will bless this youth choir while they sing, all right? Before we sing, uh, Brother Cam asked me to testify, and it's a shame that I didn't do it on my own. But um, the Lord's been so good to me, I just have taken for granted so far. Last year, when I, when I fell, I have a care. I didn't say much about it. I never said the Lord took care of me, but he did. I was way overdue, and I apologize to the Lord over those because I didn't have a salvation in front of everybody. Thank y'all for the prayers. Uh, the Lord saved me January 20th, 2012. That's been seven years. It's been the best decision I've ever made in my life.
all together may not be wealthy as numbered among the wealthy of this world, but yet we are rich beyond a miser's dream because we've been redeemed by the blood, amen. We're God's purchased possession. Thank God for that. I want to remind everybody on September the 14th on a Saturday evening at 5 p.m., the youth choir will be singing to Brooklyn Baptist Church. Refreshments will be served, so please write that down. It's in the bulletin. Saturday, uh, 5 p.m. On, on September the 14th up here at the Brooklyn Baptist Church, and I believe they'll be in revival that week, and you might want to put that on your, please put that on your calendar, and we will greatly appreciate that. Right after the service tonight, the Lord willing, we're all going to go to the fellowship hall. Everybody's invited. You all are welcome. There'll be sandwiches. There'll be refreshments. There'll be drink and fellowship to, to go along with being saved by God's grace. And we'll go and have a, uh, a gift card shower for uh, Josiah and Leanne. And so uh, they'll be there, of course. And uh, you'll, you'll, you can shake their hand. And uh, we hope that you will come over and enjoy the fellowship time together you didn't get a gift card, you know, of course, it's Sunday night. You can always just give them some money, and that'll be great as well, all right? Getting started on new home, new family, stuff like that. Let's have the ushers come on in. We'll get the regular tithe and regular offering. I want you to remember Miss Sheila Colbreth. She'll be having a defibrillator put in tomorrow, Miss Sheila Colbreth. So if, you'd like, if you would pray for her, we'd greatly appreciate that. About 1230 up at Regional. And then Brother Ray uh, Emery had the eye operated on. He's recovering. And then, uh, of course, Brother Chris Madden back here, remember him. Uh, Perry Thomas' dad, Brother Jackie Thomas, is in the hospital, at the hospital, and they'll be turning him loose, I think. They can start him on Eloquist for AFib, pray for him. And then Brother Mark Jordan will have surgery tomorrow as well. So pray for Brother Mark Jordan. I think that's carpal tunnel syndrome. And then the Crawford family hadn't been here all day, and uh, they're at the hospital. They've been at the hospital. Her uncle passed away. And now I think the grandfather's being moved to a facility. So uh, Brother Riley really asked prayer for all of his family, all right, and his wife especially. God bless you. You give tonight your tithes and offerings unto the Lord while she plays, all right. So many objects of prayer, most of them are in the bulletin. Here you go, guys. Here you go. Here you go. Right here. Yes. Most of them are in the bulletin, but um, uh, Miss Savannah, she'll be going back to the doctor in the morning, our daughter-in-law, and we're not sure what they're going to tell her, but we're hoping they're going to go get that baby this week. So uh, pray for her. I'm, I know she's hoping the same. Pray for her. And then um, uh, Mr. Ken Robbins, they want us to pray for him, please. And uh, Gwen Collins, that's Wayne Mayo's sister. Brother William Stone, bless his heart, got knee, the metal infected. They had to go in there and take the entire knee back out. He's still in the hospital. And uh, pray for him, please. And I had a good talk with him. He'll be back to church. But um, he's still there. And so, you know, all that infection, they're going to put another knee back in. So please pray for him, all right? And we'll greatly appreciate that. Come on, but there's some more. I'll get to them maybe tonight. Brother, Brother Larry, pray for us. We've got a good time. Lord God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to be here. Dear Jesus, we ask you to please intervene and 
father who's a blind sister and has had this horrible road and and heavenly father and all these that are just going through just illnesses or injuries dear heavenly father they're calling out to you heavenly father please hear them and please intervene and take care of them we ask you to please take this money and offering to propel your work lord jesus and for the missions that we give and for the school in your great and glorious name we pray amen Today I faced a mountain Once again it seemed so tall I tried to climb Though I knew I'd surely fall Then I knelt and called on Jesus Just as always I felt His presence His hand of mercy Lifted me just in time. And I want to thank him. I want to praise him. His grace has been sufficient. And like before, he's given victory one more time. He was always standing by my the valley was low, when the river was wide, so I want to thank him, and I want to praise him one more time. Looking back upon my journey, since the day I first met him, many times his love and mercy has rescued me. So once again, I come before him. One more time, I'll stand to praise him for all his blessings. Yes, he has been so good to me. And oh, I want to thank him. I want to praise him. His grace has been sufficient. And like before, he's given victory one more time. He was always standing by my side. When the valley was low, when the river was wide. So I want to thank him. And I want to praise him one more time. He was always standing by my side. When the valley was blown, when the river was white. So I want to thank him. And I want to praise him one more time. One more time. get a bulletin all right we've got several down here and you need that for a prayer list all these requests all these folks people in the hospital and the nursing facilities by the way the nursing home ministry the this saturday of, of, of the this coming up saturday uh august 31st is that right 31st all that information is in there and then uh brother jonathan has the uh the uh jubilee cds right here several several uh complete sets of the Jubilee CDs, and I think if you'll just put $10 down there in the offering, that would be great. All right, y'all ready? Come on, sing for us, all right? You've built your life on good intentions, succeeded more than time to mention. And then you watched your whole world fall apart. He's not another dream enhancer. God is your one and only answer. The reason he won't finish what you start. 
God's got a better plan. So much wiser than the ways of man. Put it all in his able hands. He knows what to do. He's qualified and well rehearsed. Creator of the universe. When you've done all you can, God's got a better plan. Standing there on the field of battle, you can hear the giant saber rattle. Never do what all those doubters say. Take the armor off and never choose it. You just need a stone and faith to use it. It won't be you that falls today. God's got a better plan. So much wiser than the ways of man. Put it all in his able hands. He knows what to do. He's qualified and well rehearsed. Creator of the universe. When you've done all you can, God's got a better plan. Avoid the self-inflicted consequence. Even when it seems that it defies all common sense. Yeah, God's got a better plan. So much wiser than the way man put it all in his able hands he knows what to do he's qualified and well rehearsed creator of the universe when you've done all you can god's got a better plan he's qualified and well rehearsed creator of the universe when you've done all you can, God's got a better plan. God's got a better plan. Good. Amen. Amen. You say amen to that? Sometimes hard for us to see that, isn't it? It really is. It's hard for us to see that. But uh, God's in control. Amen. Appreciate our visitors being here. I just spotted another visitor or two, and, and I want you to know you're the honored guest here at Mountain View. And I'm pretty confident that our ushers gave you a visitor's card. And uh, please fill that out, because without that, we, we won't even know your name and maybe a phone number or an email address or something. We'd love to communicate with you. Every visitor that comes here, uh, every visitor, our church secretary sends them a thank you note. And uh, thank you for doing that, by the way. We want them to know that coming here is greatly appreciated. And it really is. It really is. So we can't do that without the little visitor's card. If you'll fill that out, that will be greatly appreciated. I want you to take your Bibles tonight, and I want you to go to Ephesians chapter 6, just for a few moments, really, seriously, for a few moments tonight. I know you've heard that before. <laughs> We've got to go to the shower here in a little bit. I really, I really want to take a slow moment. I want to show you this verse. I'd like for you to be in a prayerful spirit. God would help us with this passage of Scripture. Ephesians chapter 6, most people <clears throat> preach out of the beginning, Brother Andy, or the middle of the chapter. And for unforeseen reasons to me, they never go to the end, including me. Today we're going to go to the very end. Look at verse 23. Peace be to the brethren. And love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a benediction to the Ephesian believer. That is a benediction, a closing thing 
for the Ephesian believers. How many likes that first word of verse 22? Nothing like it on planet Earth. You can't buy that. Not even for sale. Walmart doesn't carry it. Walgreens doesn't carry it. That's available from Heaven's storehouse. Peace. here tonight and you don't have that, you need to come quickly to the Lord and talk to him about your life. There's so many things going on in so many people's lives. I'm talking about this congregation and everywhere else. And all of it to me is like a, it's an onslaught. It's a, it's a, it's an attack. It's, uh, Brother David, it's all-out warfare. I mean, all-out spiritual warfare. Not warfare against each other. Spiritual warfare. And let me, let me tell you, I'm, I know what I'm talking about. Here's the object of the devil. To take away your peace. In anything or any circumstance or any situation or any relationship or anything else that can rob you of that, you are not going to enjoy your Christian life like God wants you to enjoy it. If I, did, if, I did, if I didn't have peace tonight, if I didn't have peace in my heart, I'd find out why, and I'd do what I could to get it back. Amen. Verse 24. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. I want to preach tonight on two titles. Number one, do we love him like we say we do? Or do we love him like we used to? Look at verse 24. That is a, a blessing for believers everywhere, the grace word. But then he closes, Brother David, to say and, and qualifies it, makes it distinct, makes it particular, and also makes it restricted, this grace. To who? To those that love the Lord Jesus Christ, and here's my message, in sincerity. Sincerity. All of our life, all of our saved life, Brother Adam, we hear and we say, and we hear others say, I love the Lord. I love Jesus. I love my Savior. I love Christ. And by the way, he loves us, amen? But listen to this, listen to this. Do you love him in sincerity? Do you love him like that? Do I love him like that? Is, is, my, is my love, is it just words? Is my, word, is my love for Christ, is it, is it machinery in motion? With no oil, no substance, no reality. Just like the husband and wife that's been married for 40 years. And he said, the wife says to her husband one day, said, honey, why don't you tell me that you love me anymore? He said, sweetheart, 40 years ago at a wedding altar, I told you I loved you. And I also told you if anything changed, I would let you know. You can laugh. That's supposed to be humorous. That's not what wives need to hear. Somebody say amen. And I, and I wonder tonight, I wonder, I wonder in this congregation of really, really, really good people, do you love him like you used to? And do you love him?
love in him like you say you do. How many of you tonight know when you're dealing with somebody about anything in life and you know this, you see it. You know they are. Watch this. And you also know when they are not sincere. By the way, I don't think you appreciate a phony. And guess what? God doesn't either. It's just so, Dr. Love, it's so weighty. And I'm, I'm not full blast yet. I don't want to be. I don't want to be. It's so searching, convicting. Do I love him in sincerity? Or is it shallow? Is it surface? Is it fleeting? Is it like a roller coaster up and down? Is it according to my situation? Is it according to my circumstance? Is it according to if life is going okay or if it's not going okay? Do I love him in sincerity? And is my sincerity, does it last more than on Sunday? Do you love him in sincerity? What, what exactly does that mean? So let's talk a moment about the meaning, the meaning of loving Christ in sincerity. Well, you have a word, Brother Brian, but you've got to use some other words to define the word. So what does it mean to love Christ in sincerity? Well, first definition, Brother Mark, it means with incorruptibility. Incorruptibility or purity, that means I should love him without sin's defilement or sin's pollution. You can't say that you love him if you're living in sin. You can't. That's right. You cannot say you love him in sincerity if you're living in unconfessed sin. How many of you still believe 1 John 1, 7? How many in this audience still believe 1 John 1, 9? And you still believe Proverbs 28, 13, that we do sin, but we should confess it and forsake it. And if we will not confess it and we will not forsake it, then how can I say that I love him in sincerity? And aren't you glad he cleanses? Amen. Aren't you glad he forgives? Aren't you glad he restored? I said, aren't you glad he restored? Aren't you glad he doesn't throw the clay away? Thank God, aren't you glad he's the God of a second chance and the God of a third chance? My point is this tonight. If I love Christ, if I love Jesus in sincerity, it means incorruptibility and it means purity. And therefore, I will not live my life with unconfessed sin. Amen. There's only one thing to do with sin, friend. That's confess and forsake it. Confess and forsake it. And by the way, ask God to help you to leave it alone. Say amen. Is everybody okay? Everybody okay? We're not supposed to get comfortable with sin. We're not supposed to hug up with sin. We're not supposed to excuse sin. We're not supposed to embrace sin. We're not supposed to welcome sin. We're not supposed to walk in sin. We're not supposed to walk in darkness. We're supposed to walk in the light of God's word. And I'm simply trying to tell you tonight, if you love Christ in sincerity, it means incorruptibility. And you will do everything in your power to keep sin out of your life. God help. God help. I don't know what else to say. I mean, God help. That's enough right there to go ahead and get in the altar. You're never going to get anywhere excusing your sin. You're never going to get anywhere leaving your sin in your life. You're never going to get anywhere going on into more sin and more sin. And let me tell you about sin, okay? Everybody got a moment? Let me tell you about sin. It's the most devastating disappointment of all time. It'll show you the front yard, but it won't show you the backyard. It'll, it'll, it'll welcome you in, but it won't show you the way out. 
It'll keep you longer than you want to stay. It'll cost you more than you want to pay. It will deceive you. Are you listening? Sin is not your friend. Sin is not my friend. Sin is not the friend of a child of God. I thank God for 1 John 1, 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. I thank God for 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I further thank God for Proverbs 28, verse number 13. He that covereth the sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh I shall have mercy. If I love Christ, if I love him sincerely, if I love him with all of my heart and with all of my soul and with all of my mind and with all of my strength, I'm going to make sure I do everything that God allowed me to do to keep sin out out of my life. Do you love him? Do you love him? I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm not trying to drag up memories. I'm not trying to put anybody down. But the truth is the truth and we're not going to apologize for it. There are people who profess to love the Lord who are living in open sin. Living in open sin. Brother Randy, it cannot be. They cannot coexist. Brother Wofford, uh, light have no communion with darkness. Uh, Christ have no concord with Belial. Y'all help me, okay? I'm not going to be lost. Uh, you cannot, I cannot walk with the Lord and we cannot fellowship with the Lord and we cannot enjoy the Lord and we cannot enjoy serving God uh, walking in rebellion and sin. Amen. Do you love him like you say you do? Do you love him like you used to? What do you mean you used to? Well, he told the church of Ephesus, Brother Derry, he said, I appreciate this, and I appreciate this, and I appreciate this. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left, not lost, not lost, thou hast left thy first love. I don't want to get there. I don't want you to get there. I don't want your family to get there. I don't want my family to get there. Why would I leave my first love? It's the best thing that ever happened to me. Thank God he's the dearest friend I've ever had. I love the Christian life. I'm proud to be an old time Christian. And why would I scorn him? And why would I reject him? And why would I turn from him? Uh, where are you going to go, friend? I said, where are you going to go? Uh, thou alone hast the words of eternal life. Uh, he said to that cry, will you also or turn away? Peter said, there's nowhere to go. Say amen. I say to you, I thank God he's satisfied. I said he's satisfied. He gives peace. He gives joy. He gives fellowship. He gives spiritual blessing. I do not want to leave my first love. Man, I'm asking two questions tonight. Number one, do we love him like we say we do? And number two, do we love him like we used to? To love Christ in sincerity, Brother Joe, means incorruptibility and purity without sin's defilement nor sin's pollution. Number two, I'm talking about the meaning of loving Christ in sincerity, Brother Josiah. Not only does that word carry the idea of incorruptibility, but you'll love this. It also carries a secondary meaning, Miss Jackie can, and that is unending existence. Yeah. Unending, perpetual. I don't know if I can say this word right. I got it. Perpetuity. I got that right, didn't I? 
perpetuity, I would much rather say perpetualness or, or perpetual, but that's the meaning of the word, Pitt. I was shocked, but I was pleasantly shocked and pleasantly surprised and blessed that to love him in sincerity, Brother Kevin, means I'm going to love him in perpetuity and I'm going to love him with unending existence. In other words, there's never going to be a dime in my saved life that I quit loving him. Amen. I loved him in 1978. I don't want to love him in 1999. I want to love him in 2019. I don't want to stop loving it. I don't want to quit loving it. I don't want to give up on loving it. I'm not discouraged. I'm not defeated. Uh, the Christian life doesn't make me sick. I love the Christian life. I said the Christian life uh, doesn't give me a nauseating feeling. Thank God I'm glad I'm a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm simply trying to tell you tonight, if I loved him in 1978, I should still be loving him in 2019. To love him in sincerity is to love him with an unending existence. Not fleeting, not an earthly love, but a spiritual and a forever love. And by the way, that's how he loves you and I. I think that right now, me trying to hurry, number one, is a deterrent. But I think right now I need to read you something from God's word. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Look what Paul said. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's not like he loves me, he loves me not, he loves me, he loves me not. It's like he loves me on Monday, he loves me on Tuesday, he loves me on Wednesday, he loves me on Thursday, he loves me on Friday, he loves me on Saturday, he loves me on Sunday, it starts all over, he loves me on Monday, he loves me on Tuesday, he loves me when I'm on the mountain, he loves me when I'm in the valley, he loves me when I'm good, he loves me when I'm bad. I said he loves me when I'm good, he loves me when I'm bad, he loves me when I'm in the valley, he loves me when I'm on the mountain, he loves me no matter what's happening, he loves me at my house, he loves me at the hospital, he loves me at the nursing home, he loves me at church, he loves me while I'm singing, he loves me while I'm pouting, he loves me when I'm sad, he loves me when I'm glad, he'll always love me, I said he'll always love me, nothing can take it away, nothing can take it away. Nothing can change it. He'll always love me. And he'll always love you. I said nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing on earth. Nothing in heaven. Nothing in hell. I said nothing on earth. Nothing in heaven. And nothing in hell shall separate us from the love of Christ. That's his love for me. And if I love him in sincerity. If I love him in sincerity. I love him like he loves me. God help. God help. When I'm bad, he still loves me. When I'm sad, I don't get that way much. I really don't. But when I do, You'll find me, I'll just go ahead and tell you. You'll find me in that back bedroom right here. That blue bedroom. Laying on the bed. Hopefully, no, no, and this is no reflection on my wife, but hopefully nobody home. Nobody, nobody, I don't want to talk to nobody. I just want to be left alone. Me and my thoughts and God Almighty. If, you ever, if I ever get sad, if I ever get really down, if I ever get really discouraged, you'll find me laid on that bed, awake, trying to pray, maybe crying, just all alone, but yet not alone. 
sometimes coming leaping over the mountains and skipping over the hills. He'll show himself to the last. And I'll say, hey, that's my beloved. He'll say something like, hey, I'm still here. I love you, son. It don't matter if you're being sad, mad, mad, bad, glad. I still love you. And that's and you know what? There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. There is not one of those verses says, "Brother Ivester, he loves us no, in the neither height nor death, nor life nor death." Now, can I tell you something about that? Life nor death. You know what that means, right there? That life there, brother Josiah. I believe it really means that if those martyrs were offered life, they were offered life. And they took life, they either threw the, threw the incense to the fire in the honor of one of those gods of Rome or whatever, of, 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 the, uh, of the Caesar, and therefore they wouldn't be executed even if they'd have chose life. Even that's what that word means right there. If they'd have chose life rather than death, Miss Leanne, guess what? God would have still loved them. God loves you at your worst. I said God loves you at your worst. And God loves you at your best. God loves you on Sunday, but God loves you on Friday. Amen. And I'm simply trying to tell you that kind of love, it needs to be emulated. That kind of a love wherein it's not divine love, Miss Sandy Matthew. That's not what I'm saying, but it's an unending love, a non-decaying love, a, a love that's perpetual, a perpetuity. I got it right, amen. It's perpetual, and that's how you love Christ. And sincerely, you love him all the time. And you keep on loving him. Could I ask anybody in this audience to stand up right now and give me a reason why you wouldn't keep on loving him? Could I challenge this audience tonight why you'd want to stand up and say, I disavow him, I reject him, I no longer want to love and serve him. You can't give me a good reason because there's not a good reason. You think about how hard and how bad and what's going on in your life. Your, your worst day is still better than some of those lost sinners best day. Amen. We've got so much to thank him and praise him for, Brother Brian. I'm talking to you about one verse, and that one verse is that we would love our Lord Jesus Christ, Dr. Love, in sincerity, in sincerity. That means incorruptibility. It means unending existence or perpetuity, perpetualness. But number three, and I have two more and I'm finished for right now. Here's what else it means, Brother Ivester. It means genuineness. Genuineness. God help us to be real. God help us to be real. Amen. Brother Mark, Miss Michelle, that verse is saying, I should love Christ with a genuine love. A genuine love. Sincerely, Brother Trey, sincerely means genuinely. And that means without hypocrisy. Yeah. Uh, and you say, well, explain that. Well, it's like this. It's like this. And I really don't, I really don't think, and I really don't think this is going to hit anybody. I really don't, but I need to say it. It's like this. You're one thing here. You're around all of us. But you're something different or out there. That, ladies and gentlemen, is hypocrisy. And that is not loving Christ in sincerity. Because if you love Christ in sincerity, it will be genuine, Brother Peeler, and we will not have hypocritical conduct and hypocritical motive, nor, Brother Stoltz, hypocritical action. And by the way, God does not like hypocrisy. Amen. He likes genuinely. Does anybody know what the root word of hypocrisy is? Do you know it? I know you do. I mean, have you studied it? Have you, have you looked at it lately? That word hypocrisy is a stage actor, a mask. Miss Lynn, a stage actor, a mask. They were, they were feigning the part. They had the mask or the, the, the stage actor, Miss Lynn, because that's not who they really were. They were only acting, right? They're, they're, uh, let's just say Indiana Jones, that actor. He's not really Indiana Jones, right? Right? You got that? You know, I can throw rocks at me for that, are you? Surely, don't, don't tell me you had not watched it. Yes, you have. I know you have. And some of you haven't, but whatever. You know who, you know who he is, right? But the, he's not that actor, Harrison Ford, right? He's not really Indiana Jones, right? He's Harrison Ford. He's probably a knucklehead. Somebody tell him I said so. 
We'll take his tithe, but anyway, he's probably a knucklehead. Forget it. He's not really Indiana Jones. He's playing the part. He's being an actor. And when you are a hypocrite, you're playing the part. God help. You're playing the part. You're not being genuine. You're not being real. And listen, that is the last thing we need out of a God's church, God's believers. If I'm going to love him, and I'm almost finished, if I'm going to love him in sincerity, and that's all I'm preaching, if I'm going to love him, Brother Adair, in sincerity, I will love him, number one, with incorruptibility, without sin's defilement and sin's pollution. I will love him with an unending existence for perpetuity, perpetual. I will love him and keep on and keep on and keep on and keep on loving him. And then I will love him with a genuineness and a realness that he truly can identify and know about. Just listen, church, and I'm moving on. Just be genuine. Just be real. You know what feigned behavior is? F, I think I got it. F E I G N. F F E I G N. I think F E I G N E D. Feigned. Feigned. Like, did I get that right? Feigned behavior. That's not the kind of love I need to show Christ. Not the, that's not the way to live. Amen. It's not the way to live. I wonder sometimes, Brother Peeler, Miss Peeler, I wonder sometimes if the world wouldn't have more confidence in God's church if they see more genuineness and more realness out of God's people. I don't know about you tonight, but I, I want to listen. Number one, number one, I want to love him like I say I do. Now here's my real burden tonight. I want to love him like I used to. I want to love him like I used to. Incorruptibility, unending existence, genuineness, and then number four, I should love him with an undecay. It should be undecaying in essence or continuous. Undecaying, and in other words, my love for him should be undecaying. It should it should not be less now than it was five years ago. Undecaying. To love him like this is to love him with a never diminishing love. It does not get less fervent. It is not unfading, but it is permanent. It's permanent, not a passing gleam like the morning cloud and the early dew. Our love to Christ should be free from the elements of decay or change that would work its destruction, free from hypocrisy, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. As there was, I've already preached it, as there was a deathless principle in his love for us. Can I get an amen right there? As there is, Miss Sheila, a deathless principle in his love for us, so there should be a deathless principle in our love to him. Amen. Our affection to God. Our affection to God should be such as God puts in a little child for their parent. And so that child always loves that parent. I said that child always loves that parent. They're supposed to anyway. Our love for Christ, our love for our Savior ought to mirror that kind of childlike affection. Amen. God help us. God help us. I think, I think, I think that... Uh, I think Mark and John and Matthew said it right. I should love the Lord my God with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my mind, and with all of my strength. If I love him with all my heart, listen, I'm finished, I'm finished. If I love him with all my heart, he has my affection. Say amen. He has my affection. If I love him with all my soul, he has my emotion. Say amen. I love this. If I love him with all my mind, he has my thinking. He has my meditation. And if I love him, Brother Mark, with all of my strength, guess what? He has my service. Amen. Do you love him like you say you do? Do you love him? Come on, Lord. Do you love him like you used to? Do you really love him in sincerity? Is there genuineness about you? How deep does your love go? Amber, I thought about the song you sung. I think it was on the radio yesterday. How deep the Father's love. How deep the, did you hear that? God, I was sitting in that study. I think it was that song. How deep the Father's love for us. It goes on and on. And that is the kind of love that I should have for my Savior. Do you love him 
like you say you do? And do you love him like you used to? Let's bow our head. Altars are open. It's early. That's right. That's right. Come on, church. Respond, would you? Respond. Please respond to the word of God. God bless you. God bless you and you. Please respond to the scriptures. God help our love life. May God help every one of us to love him in sincerity. To love him with genuineness. Depth of feeling with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. Dear Lord in heaven, I need what I preached. I really do. I ask you to give that kind of love in my heart for you. Don't let me leave my first love, but may I cherish it. Have a desire to love you more. Bless as we sing now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. Let's sing. 529. Sing it.